There was nothing about the starry sky that night to suggest that strange and mysterious things would soon be happening. Hagrid, at last. And where did you get that motorbike? Borrowed it, Professor Dumbledore, sir. No problems, were there? No, sir. House was almost destroyed, but I got him out all right. Nestled in the bundle was a baby. Harry Potter, the boy who lived. For the next 11 years, Harry lived with his dreadful Aunt Petunia, Uncle Vernon, and cousin Dudley, the Dursleys. Then, one day, he received a letter inviting him to attend Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Told you, didn't I, Harry? Told you you was famous. Professor Quirrell. Harry, Professor Quirrell will be one of your teachers at Hogwarts. Potter, can't tell you how pleased I am to meet you. What sort of magic do you teach, Professor Quirrell? Did you defense against the dark arts? Not that you need it, eh, Potter? You'll be getting all your equipment, I suppose. I've got to pick up a new book on vampires myself. Must get on, lots to buy. Come on, Harry. Three up, two across. Right. Stand back, Harry. Welcome to Diagon Alley. While at Gringotts Wizard Band, Hagrid collected a scruffy package from Vault 713, mentioning to Harry that the package, whatever it was, would be safer at Hogwarts. Just your wand left from Ollivander's. Oh yeah, and I still haven't got your birthday present. Hello? Good afternoon. Ah, yes. Yes, yes. I thought I'd be seeing you soon, Harry Potter. You have your mother's eyes. It seems only yesterday she was in here herself, buying her first wand. Ten and a quarter inches long, swishy, made of willow. Nice wand for charm work. Your father, on the other hand, favored a mahogany wand. Well, I say your father favored it. It's really the wand that chooses the wizard, of course. Well now, Mr. Potter, let's get started, shall we? If you'll kindly follow me. Have a look around, Mr. Potter. When you find a wand you like, pick it up and let's see if it likes you. Beechwood and Dragon Heartstring. Nine inches. Nice and flexible. Stand over there, on that platform, to try your wand. My goodness, definitely not. Ebony and unicorn hair. Eight and a half inches. Springy. No, definitely not. Holly and Phoenix Feather. Eleven inches. Nice and supple. How very curious. Sorry, but what's curious? I remember every wand I've ever sold, Mr. Potter. Every single wand. It so happens 
that the phoenix, whose tail feather is in your wand, gave another feather. Just one other. It is very curious indeed that you should be destined for this wand when it's brother. Why its brother gave you that scar. Yes. Curious indeed how these things happen. The wand chooses the wizard, remember? I think we must expect great things from you, Mr. Potter. After all, he who must not be named did great things. Terrible, yes, but great. Hey, Harry. Happy birthday, Harry. She's beautiful. What's her name? Her name's Hedwig, and she's yours to keep. Thanks, Hagrid. We best be going now. Soon after, Harry caught the Hogwarts Express from Platform 9 and 3 quarters and left the Muggle world far behind. The train slowed right down and finally stopped. They followed Hagrid down to the edge of a great black lake. The fleet of little boats moved off all at once, gliding across the lake, which was as smooth as glass. Everyone was silent until... Ooh, wicked! One by one, each of the first years was sorted into his or her house. And what of Harry Potter? Not Slytherin! Not Slytherin! Not Slytherin, eh? Said the hat in his ear. You could be great. It's all here in your head, and Slytherin will help you on your way to greatness. No? Well, if you're sure, better be... Gryffindor! Dumbledore stood up. The third floor corridor is out of bounds to everyone who does not wish to suffer a most painful death. Hey, Harry! Hello! I'm Ron Weasley. I'm in Gryffindor too. It's no surprise, really. All my brothers are in Gryffindor. So, why do you think Professor Dumbledore put the third for House of Bounds? I really don't know. We've got to follow that prefect. It's odd, because he usually gives us a reason why we're not allowed to go somewhere. I do think he might have told us prefects at least. That prefect's Percy, my other brother. How many brothers have you got? Too many. My name's Hermione Granger, by the way. And you are? Uh, Ron. Ron Weasley. Pleasure. You've got something on your nose. Huh? You must be Harry Potter. I know all about you, of course. Look out! Filch is coming. We'd better go. Gryffindors, follow me, please. Keep up. Come on, Harry. We'd better follow Percy up to the Gryffindor common room. Keep up, please, and follow me. Quickly now, come on. This is the most direct path to the dormitory. Oh, and keep an eye on the staircases. They like to change. Peeves, a poltergeist. <laughs> Ooh, hickle firsties. What fun. <laughs> Go away, Peeves, or the Baron will hear about this. I mean it. You want to watch out for Peeves. The bloody Baron's the only one who can control him. He won't even listen to us prefects. Gather round here. Password? You need a password to enter the common room. This year, it's Caput Draconis. Caput Draconis. Well done, young Gryffindor. That is indeed the correct password. Thanks, Harry. By the look of that scar, you must be Harry Potter. 
I'm Fred Weasley, and this is my brother, George. Hello, Harry. I'm Neville Longbottom. This is my remember-all. It tells you if there's something you've forgotten to do. Hello, Harry Potter. I am nearly headless Nick, the Gryffindor house ghost. Welcome to Hogwarts. Hogwarts has four houses. They are Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw and Slytherin. The hourglasses show which house has the greatest number of house points on any day. While you're here, your house will be like your family. Your triumphs will earn you points. Any rule breaking and you will lose points. At the end of the year, the house with the most points is awarded the House Cup. Please try and remember, only prefects and teachers can award house points, and they can also take them away. Welcome to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. I am Albus Dumbledore, your headmaster. Now, Hogwarts is full of secrets, Harry, so search behind every door. But keep in mind, not all secrets are rewarding. Only this morning, I took a wrong turn and stumbled upon a room full of chocolate frogs. But alas, when I returned, they'd been replaced by a, a nasty horde of fire crabs. Come on, Harry. Better get moving. Potions is in the dungeons. We don't want to be late. Double potions with the Slytherins. Snape's head of the Slytherin house. They say he always favours them. We'll be able to see if it's true. It's true then. Harry Potter's come to Hogwarts. This is Crab and this is Goyle. And my name is Malfoy. Draco Malfoy. <coughs> Think my name's funny, do you? No need to ask yours. Red hair and a hand-me-down robe. You must be a Weasley. You'll soon find out that some wizarding families are better than others, Potter. You don't want to go making friends with the wrong sort. I can help you there. I think I can tell who the wrong sort are for myself, thanks. Buzz off, Potter. You are here to learn the subtle science and exact art of potion making. As there is little foolish wand waving here, many of you will hardly believe this is magic. I don't expect you will really understand the beauty of this softly simmering cauldron with its shimmering fumes, the delicate power of liquids that creep through human veins, bewitching the mind, ensnaring the senses. I can teach you how to bottle fame, brew glory, even stop a death. If you aren't as big a bunch of dunderheads as I usually have to teach, Mr. Potter, tell me, what would I get if I added powdered root of asphodel to an infusion of wormwood? I don't know, sir. Pity. Clearly fame isn't everything, is it, Mr. Potter? Potter, where would you look if I told you to find me a bazaar? I don't know, sir. Thought you wouldn't open a book before coming, eh, Potter? For your information, Potter, a bazaar is a stone taken from the stomach of a goat, and it will save you from most poisons. Professor Snape? He doesn't want to teach potions. Everyone knows he's after Quirrell's job. Knows an awful lot about the dark art, Snape. Hey, Harry. Do you have 25 beans for us? We need the beans for some... <clears throat> experiments. Nice work, Harry. You found all the beans we needed for now. Here's a wizard card, then. Hope you don't have this one yet. Thanks for helping us out, Harry. Ah! 
Dear Harry, would you like to come and have a cup of tea with me this afternoon? I want to hear all about your first day. Hagrid. Hagrid's bound to be in his hut. Come on, Harry, follow me. Make yourselves at home. This is Ron. Another Weasley, eh? <laughs> I spent half my life chasing your twin brothers away from the forest. Hey, Ron. Somebody broke into Gringotts. Listen. Believed to be the work of dark wizards or witches unknown, Gringotts goblins, while acknowledging the breach, insist nothing was taken. The vault in question, number 713, had been emptied earlier that very same day. That's odd. That's the vault that Hagrid and I went to. Good afternoon, class. Good, Good afternoon, afternoon, Madam Pooch. Pooch. Welcome to your first flying lesson. Well, what are you waiting for? Everyone step up to their broomsticks. Whoa! Oh! Mi Mr. 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 Longbottom. Oh dear, it's a broken wrist. Come on now, it's all right, up you get. None of you are to move while I take this boy to the hospital wing. Come oh. on, dear. Did you see his face? Maybe if the fat lump had given this a squeeze, he would have remembered to fall on his fat backside. Give it here, Malfoy. No, I think I'll leave it somewhere for Longbottom to find. How about on the roof? What's the matter, Potter? Bit beyond your reach. Give it here, Malfoy, or I'll knock you off your broom. You want the remember all back? See if you can catch it. Here, take this stupid thing. I've no use for it. Don't think this is the last of it, Potter. I'd take you on any time on my own. Tonight, if you want. Wizard's Duel? What's the matter? Never heard of a Wizard's Duel? Of course he has. I'm his second. Meet me tonight on the fourth floor. Wands only. No contact. Mr. Potter, I'm Professor McGonagall, Deputy Headmistress of Hogwarts and Head of Gryffindor House. Although I do not approve of your chasing Malfoy about, I'll admit you have remarkable talent on a broomstick. Ordinarily, first-year students may not compete in Quidditch. In your case, we might overlook that rule. Wow! Hey, Harry! Have you collected 25 beans? Thanks for helping us out, Harry. Here's a wizard card, then. Hope you don't have this one yet. Come on, George. We've got work to do. People only die in proper duels. You know, with real wizards. The most you and Malfoy will be able to do is send sparks at each other. Neither of you knows enough magic to do any real damage. I bet he expected you to refuse anyway. If he tries to curse you, you'd better dodge it. Because I can't remember how to block them. Half past eleven, we'd better go. I can't believe you're going to do this, Harry. You, go back to bed. Come on. Don't you care about Gryffindor? Do you only care about yourselves? I don't want Slytherin to win the House Cup. And you'll lose all the points I got from Professor McGonagall for knowing about switching spells. Go away! All right, but I warned you. You just remember what I said when you're on the train home tomorrow. You're so... Now what am I going to do? That's your problem. We've got to go. We're going to be late. I'm coming with you. Come on, Harry. We have to get moving. Follow me to the fourth floor. 
Over here, Potter. Brought reinforcements, have you? Good. They can watch you lose. Follow me and let's finish this. Huh? Bye-bye, Gryffindor. Ha ha ha! Looks like you've fallen into the Forbidden Corridor. It's a good job I let Professor Snape know. He'll be there any second now. Bye-bye. Malfoy! Quick, in here! That was close. Ron, what are you... school? If any dog needs exercise, that one does. You don't use your eyes, any of you, do you? Didn't you see what it was standing on? The floor? I wasn't looking at its feet. I was too busy with its heads. No, not the floor. It was standing on a trap door. It's obviously guarding something. What could possibly need such heavy protection? It's either really valuable or really dangerous. Or both. Harry, have you collected 25 beans? Thanks, Harry. We really needed these. They're for a little joke we're playing on Slytherin. Here's a wizard card for you. You've earned it. Come on, George. We've got work to do. early for mail, isn't it? But I never get mail. Let's open it. It's a broomstick. That's not just a broomstick, Harry. It's a Nimbus 2000. But who? Welcome, Mr. Potter. Grab your broomstick and we'll begin the training. Welcome to Quidditch training. Whichever seeker catches the Golden Snitch scores his team 150 points. Which is why seekers tend to get fouled so much. Come on, Harry. The Halloween feast is about to begin. Let's get to the Great Hall. Where's Miney? Pavati Patel said she wouldn't come out of the girls' bathroom on the second floor. She said that she's been in there all afternoon crying. Troll! In the dungeon! Troll! In the dungeon! Thought you wanted to know. Silence! Everyone will please not panic. Prefects will lead their house back to the dormitories. Teachers will follow me to the dungeons. I've just thought, Hermione, what's about her? She doesn't know about the troll. just came out of the Forbidden Corridor. He's limping quite badly. How could a troll get in? Don't ask me. 
They're supposed to be really stupid. Can you smell something? I think the trolls left the dungeon. It's in the girls' bathroom! Ah! Hermione! So, just knocked out. Wicked! Oh my goodness! Explain yourselves, both of you. Well, what it is? It's my fault, Professor McGonagall. Miss Granger! I went looking for the troll. I read about them and thought I could handle it. But I was wrong. If Harry and Ron hadn't come and found me, I'd probably be dead. Be that as it may, it was an extremely foolish thing to do. I would have expected more rational behaviour on your part, and I am very disappointed in you, Miss Granger. Five points will be taken from Gryffindor for your serious lack of judgement. As for you two gentlemen, I just hope you realise how fortunate you are. Not many first-year students could take on a fully-grown mountain troll and live to tell the tale. Five points will be awarded to each of you for sheer dumb luck. Perhaps you ought to, to go. Could have heard to get us out of trouble like that. Mind you, we did save her from a full grown mountain troll. Thanks. What are friends for? Exhausted from their encounter with the troll, Harry, Ron, and Hermione returned to the Gryffindor common room and discussed the strange goings on at Hogwarts. Harry suspected that someone had released the troll to distract everyone so that they could get into the Forbidden Corridor. Harry, what's that? Hey, Harry! Have you collected 25 beans? We need the beans for some <clears throat> experiments. Nice work, Harry. We found all the beans we needed for now. Here's a wizard card then. Hope you don't have this one yet. Remember, you don't know anything about us collecting beans. It'll be our secret, right? Quidditch against Slytherin today. Good luck, Potter. Then again, now that you've proven yourself against a troll, a little game of Quidditch should be easy work for you. Even if it is against my boys. That was... disturbing. I'll tell you what's disturbing. Snape smiling. Quidditch against Slytherin, eh? It'll really wipe the smiles of their faces if we win. Just as long as we're not wiping you off the field. Lee Jordan here, commentating on what might turn out to be the game of the year. Slytherin versus Gryffindor. The two teams are pretty evenly matched, but only one will be the winner today. I'm sure everyone's been looking forward to this match. I know I have. The Quidditch Fish has three goals at each end. The Chasers throw the couple and try to put it through the hoops to score. Watch out for the bludgers. These are charm balls that can knock you off your broomstick. Two meters of each team try to keep them away. Gryffindor's new team seeker is Harry Potter. It's his job to find and catch the golden snitch. Jordan, no favoritism. 
Sorry, miss. Remember, first avoid the bludgers, then find and catch the snitch. The game is over when the snitch is caught. Good luck. thinks he's doing. If I didn't know better, I'd say he'd lost control of his broom. Maybe something happened to it when Flint blocked him. No, can't nothing interfere with a broomstick except powerful dark magic. No kid could do that to a Nimbus 2000. It's Snape. He's jinxing the broom. What do we do? Leave it to me. He's got the snitch! Well done, Harry. Harry! It was Snape. Hermione and I saw him. He was cursing your broomstick, muttering. He wouldn't take his eyes off you. I know a jinx when I see one. I've read all about them. Hagrid, you know all about magical creatures. Do you know anything about that dog on the third floor? How do you know about Fluffy? Fluffy? Yeah, he's mine. Bought him off a Greek chappy I met in the pub last year. I lent him to Dumbledore to guard the... Yes? Um, never mind. That's top secret, that is. You forget that dog, and you forget what is guarding. That's between Professor Dumbledore and Nicholas Flamel. Nicholas Flamel? Why does that name sound familiar? I shouldn't have said that. I should not have said that. Christmas! You too? Will you look at this? I've got some presents. What did you expect? Turnips? If that's what I think it is, they're really rare and really valuable. What is it? It's an invisibility cloak. I'm sure it is. Your father left this invisibility cloak in my possession before he died. It is time it was returned to you. Use it well. Look! Hedwig is back! She has a message from Hermione. Read it, Harry. Merry Christmas, Harry. Merry Christmas, Ron. Ever since Hagrid mentioned Nicholas Flamel, I've been trying to find out who he is. I've been wondering for a while if information about Flamel isn't somewhere in the restricted section of the library. Unfortunately, you need a specially signed note from one of the teachers to look in any of the restricted books, and I know you'll never get one. I think there's a book called a study of recent developments in wizardry in there that might give us a clue to who he is. You will keep looking while I'm away, won't you? And send me an owl if you find anything. See you soon, Hermione. Come on, Harry. 
Hermione said we need to find that book, a study of recent developments in wizardry, in the restricted section of the library. I've heard there are books in the restricted section containing powerful dark magic never taught at Hogwarts. Harry, the book we're looking for is usually only read by older students studying advanced defense against the dark art. I hope Madame Pince isn't in the library. Maybe you should try out the cloak. You'll be able to go in the restricted section without being seen. I'll meet you in the common room later. Yes, Mr. Filch, what is it? Uh, Professor Snape, you said to alert you if I heard anyone sneaking around in the Forbidden Corridor. Well, Mrs. Norris and I suspect that one of the students may be trying to sneak past us. I see. That's very interesting, Mr. Filch. And I have an idea who it might be. But we have ways of dealing with interlopers. You have my permission to use the harshest measures necessary. There is something very special in the Forbidden Corridor that I've had my eye on for some time. We can't let anyone interfere with my plans. Can we, Mr. Filch? No, indeed, Professor Snipe. Mrs. Norris and I will be extra vigilant watching out for intruders. See that you do, Mr. Filch. I have something special planned for anyone who tries to defy me. Twenty-five beans for us. <laughs> That's it. That's all the beans we need. Thanks, Harry. We couldn't have done it without you. Here's a wizard card for you. You've earned it. Thanks, Harry. We really needed these. Remember, you don't know anything about us collecting beans. It'll be our secret, right? Come on, George. We've got work to do. Midnight, you call thirsty. Tut, tut, tut. Naughty, naughty. You'll get naughty. What's that you got there, Potter? Peas, please. Let me see it. Give it here. It doesn't belong to you. Reflected in the mirror of Erised were Harry's parents, James and Lily Potter. Harry stared hungrily back as though hoping to fall right through the glass and reach them. Mom! Dad! 
So, you, like hundreds before you, have discovered the delights of the Mirror of Erised. I didn't know it was called that, sir. Can you think what the Mirror of Erised shows us all? It, well, it shows me, my family. Let me give you a clue. The happiest man on earth would look into the mirror and see only himself exactly as he is. So then, it shows us what we want. Whatever we want. Yes, and no. It shows us nothing more or less than the deepest and most desperate desires of our hearts. You, Harry, you have never known your family. You see them standing beside you. But remember this, Harry. This mirror gives us neither knowledge nor truth. Men have wasted away in front of it, even gone mad. That is why tomorrow it will be moved to a new home. And I must ask you not to go looking for it again. It does not do to dwell on dreams, Harry, and forget to live. I can't believe you two! If Filch had caught you! I checked that copy of A Study of Recent Developments in Wizardry you found in the Restricted section. No mention of Nicholas Flamel. Shame about not finding him. Have some bacon or something. Why aren't you eating anything? I'm sure I've read Flamel's name somewhere. I'm going to check another book later. Notable magical names of our time. Might have some mention of Flamel. What happened? Leglocker Leg curse. curse. Malfoy. Malfoy. I met him outside the library. He said he'd been looking for someone to practice that on. You're worth 12 of Malfoy. The sorting hat chose you for Gryffindor, didn't it? And where's Malfoy? Is thinking Slytherin. Thanks, Harry. I think I'll go to bed. Do you want the card? You collect them, don't you? <gasps> I found him. I found Flamel. Listen to this. Dumbledore is particularly famous for his defeat of the dark wizard Grindelwald in 1945, the discovery of the 12 uses of dragon's blood, and his work on alchemy with his partner, Nicholas Flamel. I knew the name sounded familiar. I knew it! I knew it! I never thought to look in here. I got this out of the library weeks ago for a bit of light reading. This is light? Nicholas Flamel is the only known maker of the Philosopher's Stone. The what? Oh, honestly, don't you two read? Of course! Here it is! Nicholas Flamel is the only known maker of the Philosopher's Stone. The Philosopher's Stone is a legendary substance with astonishing powers. It'll transform any metal into pure gold and produces the elixir of life, which will make the drinker immortal. Immortal? It means you never die. The only stone currently in existence belongs to Mr. Nicholas Flamel, the noted alchemist who last year celebrated his 665th birthday. No wonder we couldn't find Flamel in that A study of recent developments in Wizardry book. He's not exactly recent if he's 665, is he? That's what Fluffy's guarding on the third floor. That's what's under the trap door. The Philosopher's Stone. A stone that makes gold and stops you from ever dying. No wonder Snape's after it. Now I can show you what I wanted to talk to you about. It's a dragon's egg, Harry. But it's our secret, mind you. I got this from a man in the Hogshead pub. I need some fire seeds to give it that last burst of heat to force it to hatch. Go ahead and put them in the fire, Harry. You've done it, Harry. It's hatching. You come, me beauty. Ain't he lovely? I'll call him Norbert. He's a Norwegian Ridgeback, you know. 
Harry, you're a true friend. I want you to have this book, Quidditch Through the Ages. Hmm, we'd better give Norbert his first feed soon. I'll see you later, Harry. Thanks again. Harry, Ron and Hermione spent most of their free time in Hagrid's hut, trying to convince him that he couldn't keep Norbert his beloved dragon. Eventually, after much coaxing, Hagrid agreed. That night, Harry carried Norbert up to the tallest tower. Ron's brother, Charlie, had arranged to collect the dragon from the tower and return him to Romania. Once Norbert had been freed, however, Malfoy sprang his trap. Harry was caught by Professor McGonagall. For his detention, Harry was to make his way into the Forbidden Forest and search for a wounded unicorn. Is that you, Harry? Hurry up. I want to get started. Right then. Now, listen carefully, because it's dangerous what we're going to do tonight, and I don't want no one taking risks. There's a unicorn in there being hurt badly by Summit. This is the second time in a week. I found one dead last Wednesday. Could a werewolf be killing the unicorns? Not fast enough. It's not easy to catch a unicorn. They're powerful magic creatures. I never knew one to be hurt before. And what if whatever hurt the unicorn finds us first? There's nothing that lives in the forest that'll hurt you if you're with me. Right then. Follow me. Let's split up and search for the unicorn, Harry. The best way to find wounded unicorns is to follow a trail of silver blood. It should show up well in this moonlight. Follow the silver blood to find the unicorn. Be careful. The forest can be a dangerous place. I better go, Harry. That spoilt brat Draco is waiting with Fang. If I'm not back soon, Fang might just have him for his dinner. Ah, Potter. That oaf Hagrid sent me to tell you that we haven't found the unicorn yet. I doubt Hagrid could find the boots on his feet without a map. Don't get lost, Potter. Remember, these woods can be very dangerous. I see you found the unicorn's blood trail, Harry. I don't understand what would be killing the unicorns. Never heard anything like it before. There's summit in these woods that shouldn't be. Be careful now and stay with the path. Call me if you find anything. Harry was rescued in the nick of time by the centaur Firenze and rode on his back to safety. You all right there, Harry? The, the unicorn's dead, Hagrid. It's in that clearing back there. What was that thing? A monstrous creature. It is a terrible crime to slay a unicorn. Drinking the blood of a unicorn will keep you alive even if you are an inch from death, but at a terrible price. But you have slain something so pure that from the moment the blood touches your lips, you will have a half-life, a cursed life. But who would choose such a life? Can't you think of anyone? Some say he died. Cardswallop, in my opinion. Don't know if he'd enough human left in him to die. Do you mean to say that that thing that killed the unicorn, that was drinking its blood, that was Voldemort? I'm saying nothing. Let's get going. Oh, that was a close shave, Harry. Any creature that would kill a unicorn and drink its blood is one to be avoided at all costs. If it was Lord Volt, I mean, he must not be named, and you better be on your guard. He's a dangerous foe. Oh, I've got a present for you, Harry. I made it myself. Some creatures find music very relaxing. If you play the right tune, you can send them to sleep. 
In fact, I remember this very tune that I used to play to my Fluffy. You mean, you know who's out there, right now, in the forest? But he's weak. He's living off the unicorns. Snape doesn't want the stone for himself. He wants the stone for Voldemort. With the elixir of life, Voldemort will be strong again. He'll... he'll come back. But if he comes back, you don't think he'd try to kill you, do you? I think if he'd have had the chance, he might have tried to kill me last night. And to think, I've been worried about my potions lesson. What are you three doing? We want to see Professor Dumbledore. See Professor Dumbledore? Why? It's sort of secret. Professor Dumbledore left ten minutes ago. He received an urgent owl from the Ministry of Magic and flew off for London at once. He's gone? Yes, Mr. Potter. Gone. And so should you be. Goodbye. What do we do? We go down the trap door. Tonight. Well, if that's what it's going to take, follow me to the third floor. Wait a minute. He's snoring. Look, it's obvious Snape's already got past Fluffy. If you two want to go back, don't be stupid. We're coming. Right then, I'll go first. Don't follow until I give a sign. If something bad happens, get yourselves out. Does it seem a bit quiet to you? Yuck! What's this ruddy stuff? I suppose it's here to break the fall. Lucky it's here, really. Lucky? Ron! Ron, where are you? Over here, Harry! Don't worry, Ron. We'll rescue you. Just hold on. I know what this is. It's Devil's Snare. Oh, I'm so glad we know what it's called. That's a great help. Shut up. I'm trying to remember how to kill it. Well, hurry up. I can't breathe. Devil's Snare. Devil's Snare. What did Professor Sprout say? Dances in the dark, delights in the damp. Incendio! Whoa! Thanks. Much appreciated. Oh, it was nothing. Lucky you pay attention to herbology, Hermione. Curious. I've never seen birds like these. They're not birds. They're keys. And I'll bet one of them fits that door. Alohomora! Well, it was worth a try. Oh, what are we going to do? There are hundreds of them. We're looking for a big old-fashioned one. Probably gold. Like the handle. There, I see it. The one with the bright blue wings. Catch the key! He went on ahead. What? It's a chess challenge. He's better at chess than both of us. He should have waited. We're in this together. Let's go in, Harry. We need to make sure Ron's OK. Oh, no! Ron! 
What if he's... He'll be all right. What do you think he's trying to do before he... I think we've got to destroy all the white pieces. I'll go. Be careful, Harry! I'm going to find the right spell to open the next door. It better not wake up or we'll be in big trouble. Oh. Alahamora! That was a close one. Let's see what's next. is blocked by magical fire. Looks like you have to choose the right potion. Be careful, Harry. It could be poison. This one looks like it will help us through the fire. You've got to find Snape on your own. I'll go back and help Ron. I'm sure he'll be all right. Listen, you've got to get him to the hospital, when. Then go straight to the Owlery and send Hedwig to Dumbledore. I might be able to hold off Snape for a while, but I'm no match for him, really. You're a great wizard, Harry Potter. You are, you know. I'm not as good as you are. Me? Books and cleverness? There are more important things. Friendship and bravery and... Oh, Harry, be careful! You! Snape! He was the... Yes, does seem the type, doesn't he? Next to him, who would suspect poor stuttering Professor Quirrell? But that day, during the Quidditch match, Snape tried to kill me. No, dear boy. I tried to kill you! And trust me, if Snape's cloak hadn't caught fire and broken my eye contact, I would have succeeded, even with Snape muttering his little counter-curse. Come here, Potter! Now, tell me, what do you see? What is it? What do you see? I... I'm shaking hands with Dumbledore. I... I've won the House Cup. He lies. Let me speak to him. Master, you are not strong enough. I have strength enough for this. Hurry, Potter. We meet again. Voldemort. Yes. You see what I've become. See what I must do to survive. Live off another, a mere parasite. Unicorn blood can sustain me, but it cannot give me a body of my own. But there is something that can, something that, conveniently enough, lies in your pocket. Stop him! Careful, Master. The mirror is protecting you. The mirror is reflecting your power back at you, Master. Ah! What is this magic? Fool, get the stone. 
Dumbledore smiled. What happened down in the dungeons between yourself and Professor Quirrell is a complete secret, he said. So naturally, the whole school knows. The stone had been destroyed, but Harry remained fearful that its loss would not prevent Lord Voldemort's return. Dumbledore nodded, sharing his concern. Nevertheless, Harry, if our battles do no more than slow Voldemort's return, with luck, he may never regain his power at all. So the stone's gone, said Ron finally. Harry nodded and wished it good riddance. Then Ron produced a brand new famous Witches and Wizards card from his robes and handed it to Harry. You've got the whole set now, Harry, Ron said. Harry was stunned. Harry made his way down to the end of the year feast alone that night. The Great Hall was decked out in green and silver to celebrate Slytherin winning the House Cup. When Harry entered, there was a sudden hush. He took a seat between Ron and Hermione, trying to ignore the stares of the other students. The House Cup, announced Dumbledore, is awarded to the team with the most house points. At the moment, that would seem to be Slytherin storm of cheering and stamping broke out from the Slytherin table. However, continued Dumbledore, I have a few last-minute points to dish out. Let me see. Ah, yes. First, to Mr. Ronald Weasley, for the best played game of chess Hogwarts has seen in many years. I award Gryffindor House ten points. Second, to Miss Hermione Granger, for the use of cool logic in the face of fire. I award Gryffindor House ten points. Third, to Mr. Harry Potter, for pure nerve and outstanding courage. I award Gryffindor House ten points. And so, for their many achievements and outstanding commitment to the school, it is with great pleasure that I present the House Cup to Gryffindor. It was the best evening of Harry's life. Better than winning at Quidditch or Christmas or knocking out mountain trolls. He would never, ever forget tonight.
Thank you very much for watching the first installment in my Harry Potter the Game movie series. This video consists of footage from the PC, the PS1 and the PS2 versions of the game. I tried to make the story as complete as possible, which resulted in some scenes being weird and kind of awkward. I let the credits roll to pay respect to the developers of these awesome games. But once again, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the second game movie.